There's no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. There's no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. There's no God. There is no God. But Worthy Allah. worship. There's Only no God. Allah. But Allah. There's no God. Abdul is in the comment section saying that he can destroy me. Abdul, come on here. Come on here, you stinky stone licker. Why don't you call Isaiah a stone licker too? Have at it. Because according to Isaiah chapter 6 and 6, he kissed a black stone and his sins was forgiven. Now explain that. That's what you get when you understudy and you talking about things you have no knowledge. According to the Bible, he kissed a black rock. Some translations render a burning coal and his sins was taken away. Now, the testimony of Isaiah is quite simple. The man recognized his uncleanness and the uncleanness of his people. And he seen God and he called him king. He didn't call Jesus king. He called God king. Sitting high and lifted up his train, filling the temple. Isaiah immediately recognized and said, Woe is me. I am a man undone, a man of unclean lips. And one of the angels took a coal, a black rock, from off the altar. And he kissed the rock and his sins was forgiven. Now tell your camp leader to explain that. Tell Sam to explain that one. Okay. This is the truth right under your nose. Right in your own Bible. See this is what happens when you spit up. It falls back down in your own face. Isaiah 6 and 5. Then said I, woe is me for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal. The Smith's translation literally says a burning black rock, a hot stone. In his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this have touched thy lips and thine iniquity. That's a big word. Okay, that's a word for smart people. Okay, that means sin for dummies. And thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sin is purged. So this man's sin was taken away by kissing a black rock. But you got all this lip service. You talking about the Arabians kissing a black rock. Now, according to the Hadith, I'm going to get that for you. Narrated by al Termini. May Allah be pleased with him. 877 al Nasa. 29, 35. The Hadith was closed as Sa'i by al Termidi. He says the stone was whiter than milk. Speaking of the Kaaba stone that you run in your mouth about. But the sins of the sons of Adam made it black. It was narrated that Abin Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him said when the black stone came down from paradise it was whiter than milk but the sins of the sons of Adam made it black now in our Bible we have no detailed revelation we don't know anything about this black rock we don't know anything about the stone that has seven eyes in the book of Zechariah that Yahshua the high priest see we have no knowledge. We are limited on our revelation because the sun has went down 
over the prophets. And God told the nation of Kedar to sing a new song. Now, these Israelites, you fail to realize that when God told Israel he would turn his songs into mournings, he would turn his songs into lamentations, when he said he would cause the song of Israel to cease, that was basically speaking of the prophecy. That was going into the scepter of the prophethood. And right here in Isaiah 42, he tells the nation of Kedar to sing a new song. What is that going into? That is going into the Quran. You hear how they recite it. It goes into a song. So he tells the nation of Israel, the prophecy, the song is done. And then he tells the nation of Kedar to sing a new song. Wake up. The scepter of the prophethood has passed to Shiloh. And here we have, what a coincidence you would say, that a man by the name of Isaiah, I-S-A, you can spell Esau, okay? The prophet Esau, peace be upon him, he was delivered the book of Isaiah. He was God's Isaiah, sent to make the ears of the people heavy and to close the eyes of the people. He did this perfectly well with the Pharisees and he even blinded your boy, your daddy Paul. He blinded him. That's why the scales fell from his eyes. The prophet Isaiah, which is a type and shadow, I don't know if you know what that means, of the prophet Isa. He kisses a black rock in your Bible that you don't know nothing about because you just full of John. You just full of John. You full of John. Hey, you full of before Abraham is I am and don't even have no clue as into what that's going into. Right under your nose, we have a prophet from the Beni Israel kissing a rock and his sins are taken away and can't nobody explain it. But right here in the Hades, we know that the sons of Adam used to kiss the Kaaba stone and the stone was white, whiter than milk. But because of the sins of mankind, it became black and we still have it today. That's why you need to shut your mouth. OK, you don't have any clue on what you're talking about, but yet you calling them a stone licker when the prophet Isaiah was a stone licker as well. If you put it in that term, he kissed the rock and his sins was taken away and you have to go to another man's book to understand. You can't even go to your own book and get the details. You can't even go to your own Bible and explain this. Another person has to give you the revelation. Why? Because the scepter of the prophethood passed to Shiloh. And Shiloh, we know, is the prophet Muhammad, the Gentile messenger who was sent as a mercy to all of mankind. Ain't that a shame? That your own book can't explain kissing a rock. You have to go to another messenger. You have to go to another prophet to receive the understanding. They didn't slaughter an animal and didn't nobody hang on a tree for his sins to be taken away. The man simply kissed the rock and his sins was taken away. He was not only a picture of the prophet Isa, peace be upon him. But he also was a picture of the Gentile messenger, the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Who has taught us to worship Allah with no partners? That's why you sound silly. And every time the Christians come in my comments speaking that stone liquor stuff, I give them this scripture and then they get raptured. They disappear. They don't know nothing about what's in their own Bible. Isaiah kissed a rock and his sins was taken away. And according to the Quran, this stone will be a witness at the last day. This is a picture 
of the truth that we have right here in the Quran, in the Hadiths. Oh, I read the Quran every morning and I read the Hadiths every morning and I'm blessed. I am blessed, far more blessed than a Westerner trying to teach me his revelation of Jesus. Let me tell you something. It's not all about Jesus. It's not all about him. It's not all about his mama. That's what the white man taught you. It's all about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshiping him with no partners. And these Israelite camps are in sad shape. They have a man they call a bishop, Nathaniel. And he think it's all about black and white, black and white, black and white. The man don't have enough wisdom and understanding to know that the most serious sin out there is worshiping God with partners. And that's what they're doing in the Israelite camps. That's what they're doing in the Christian churches. That's why I call Israelites Christians. They ain't nothing but Christians. They talk about how much they want to put Esau in slavery. And they still in slavery to Esau today. By his teachings. By his understanding of the Bible. So the message is called, why don't you call Isaiah a stone licker? Why did God allow this man to kiss a rock and his sins was taken away? Oh, don't run. Go call your pastor. Go call your camp leader. They don't know nothing about this scripture. Okay. That's why they run in their mouth. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exalted in might. And he had many ways to forgive sins. But one way, which will never ever be his way, is crucifixion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not down with human sacrifice. He never has. Okay? And he never will. He expects you to repent. He expects you to confess your sins and do better and bring forth fruit. God entrusted the nation of Israel with his law and they failed to bring forth fruit. So he fired those husbandmen. He destroyed those husbandmen. And then he went to other husbandmen, which I believe to be the nation of Islam. We call our sins to remembrance on a daily basis. And we are that religion that has laws contrary to all other religions. These Israelites are faking the funk. They don't even know nothing about keeping the Sabbath. They think it's on Saturday. It originally was on Friday. And what they really was doing on the Sabbath is washing up, taking a bath. That's what we do in Islam on the Juma prayer. The kingdom has been taken from the Bini Israel and has been given to another nation. And you have ignorant Christians in the comments from the Israelite camps talking about God never dealt with no other bloodline. You have a book in your Bible named Ruth. This woman was a Moabite. You have a woman by the name of Rahab. Whom Yahshua, a picture of the prophet Isa, saving Rahab, which is the Arabs. Only, only the Muslim. Jesus is the prophet of Islam and he is the Messiah of the Muslims and the Muslims only. But you have a picture of Joshua saving Rahab and her family and that's it. She wasn't an Israelite. Then you have a man by the name of Achior prophesying. Who was an Ammonite in your Bible. And a woman by the name of Judith helped him. And this man was joined to the house of Israel. That same day. These Christians don't know what they're talking about. How can you say that God never dealt with no other bloodline. When you have Ruth and you have Rahab in the lineage in the bloodline of Jesus. They don't know what they're talking about. 
They don't understand that Isaiah was bold. He said, you're going to leave your name for a curse, Israel. And I will call my servants by another name. They never read the Bible. All they doing is taking notes from someone who don't know nothing. They are in the darkness, groping, trying to find a wall to feel their way through. Oh, I give praises to Allah and I associate no partners with him. I take no lords in addition to him and I give him all the praise and all the glory. But we still want to deal with this question. Why did Isaiah kiss a rock and his sins was taken away? Now, I'm going to need your pastor to explain that. I'm going to need you people calling us stone lickers to explain that. Now they got raptured. Now they quiet. Now they got to take a few weeks and find an excuse for the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah was a picture of the prophet Esau. He came on the scene blinding folks. He even blinded the Pharisees. And the Pharisees accused him of making himself equal with God. Let me tell you something. The Christians are the Pharisees. They are accusing Jesus right now of being God. They're doing exactly what their daddy's been doing. The Pharisees and the head Pharisee. Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing who murdered Jesus, who murdered Jesus on biblical record like Saul wanted to murder David. That's a picture of two religions, Islam and Christianity. I told you the house of David is Islam. We have a Messiah from the tribe of Judah, same tribe as David. And the house of Saul is Christianity and its founder and its founder is Paul, whose name is Saul. That fits so perfect. OK, he is the father of the Christian church. And a lot of these Christians don't even know who their daddy is. <laughs> they don't even know that Paul is the father of the Christian church. You need to wake up. You need to read your Bible. You need to study and see that Isaiah came on the scene blinding folks. He came on the scene making people's ears heavy. And he told you about Emmanuel. He told you about a child being born. He told you about him being called everlasting father, wonderful counselor, all the above. And then he tells you about somebody being made. An offering for sin. He didn't say they body. But he said their soul. Will be made an offering for sin. God has you in his trick bag. It was only made to appear. To them that way. That Christ was crucified. But he wasn't. Allah rescued him. His name is Jesus. His name means rescue. <laughs> Allah rescued him. And you are blind by the letters of Paul. Paul taught Jesus being crucified more than anybody. And he has deceived you. Y'all can't even agree on who carried Jesus' cross. John says Jesus carried it by himself. The other three gospels says Simon the Cyrene carried it. I mean, who carried the cross? Okay, this is proof that the prophet Muhammad is a true prophet because he says boldly, neither did they kill him or crucify him for Allah took him. He went into the heavens alive like Enoch, like Elijah, the prophet Isa went into heaven alive and he will be a witness against you associating him with the father. Every time he said the father in the gospels, he was speaking in a parable. He never once addressed God as his father because I have concrete proof that he was a Muslim. He was a messenger of Allah. He was a slave of Allah. And he never once called God his daddy. He was speaking of Paul when he said, I am my father is one. He was speaking of the false Abraham 
When he said, he that have seen me has seen the father, he was speaking of the false Abraham. When he said, before Abraham was I am, he was speaking of the false Abraham, Paul. You need to wake up, you need to study your Bible, and you need to give me a reason in the comments why God allowed the prophet Isaiah to kiss a black rock and his sins was taken away. Could it be, maybe, slightly, that we have the truth? I know you're like, nope. Could it be, just, just, just maybe, that the truth is in Islam? This is the reason why in Al Toba 9, 33, it tells us that Islam would prevail above all other religions. And right now, today, we are the fastest growing. And by 2050, 2075, we will be the largest. I know you're tired of me saying it, but I can't help but to speak the truth. You know, we can't do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And lies have been murdering the truth this whole time. But let me tell you something Zerubbabel found out. He told us that truth will prevail above all else. There was a story about a tortoise. This tortoise was losing the race. And the little hare, the little rabbi, the little Paul, the little Saul was leading the race. But he got comfortable. And that tortoise crept up. You know that green book, which is a picture of the nation of Islam. It won the race. Why? Slow and steady. Slow and steady wins. And the nation of Islam which I am so proud to be a part of, I am so glad that Allah guided me to the straight path, okay? He put a Q in my name for a reason, and that was for me to pick up that Quran. And we are not letting you Christians slide. No, we are not, okay? I've been in that Bible 20 years. I've been on the same side you was on. But I was like a terrorist, okay? I was like a terrorist. And when it was my time to wake up, I am tipping over your sacred cow. And I'm pulling out that ball. I'm cutting down that grove. I'm being just like Gideon. And I'm destroying your idolatry in Christianity. There is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. I know you mad, but it's the truth. We are coming for the title. The house of Saul is getting weaker and getting weaker every day. But the house of David, which is Islam, is getting stronger and getting stronger by the day. The revelation is constantly coming, constantly coming. And the Christians fail to realize that Jesus only spoke in parables. God said, I will open my mouth in parables and I will utter things that's been kept secret since the foundation of the world. And what was the secret? There was a wolf coming from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, that second beloved son. Okay, from the same mama as Joseph, that younger son who claimed to be the father. Oh, it's over with for the Christians. Okay, God is going to give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian, and he's going to say, this is your ransom from the fire. And the Israelites still talking about, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he has bestowed favor upon Israel. Oh, yeah. They used to have it going on. They used to be on top. But they caused corruption in the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the kingdom from whoever he wants and he gives the kingdom to whoever he wants. So explain why Isaiah kissed the rock. 
Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow him to kiss a rock and his sins was taken away? Why? Because God is exalted in might and he is wise and he knows and you don't. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.